Hi everyone, uh, this is Sergeant Kerridge. I thought I would do a, a short video on why things are seen, which will help you understand about camouflage and concealment. If you understand why things are seen, you are then able to uh, know what to do to uh, try to conceal yourself and also how to uh, spot the enemy. So th the objective in this lesson is to explain the reason why objects are seen so that at the end of the lesson you'll be able to understand and state the six reasons why things are seen. It's a basic skill that sets you up for the rest of the fieldcraft lessons which will then enable you to move around an exercise area without being seen. Visual training is training to observe joined with a knowledge of how to conceal. So to observe is to see through the enemy's camouflage. To camouflage is to defeat the enemy's observation. Obviously they're uh, opposing. So after this training and some practice in concealment you'll be able to see the enemy hopefully without being seen yourself. So why are things seen? Whether an object is easy or difficult to see depends upon several factors. The main ones are shape, silhouette, texture, we used to call this surface, shadow, spacing, and finally movement. I was taught to remember this as five S's and one M. So if you look at this picture of a frog, bearing in mind those factors we've just said, why is it you think that we can see it? Have a think about that, that when we look at that frog, why is it that we can see it in terms of those six factors? And if you look at this picture, a little bit more difficult, you should be able to see the owl, in fact two owls on that tree. Again, why is it that you can see them or find it difficult to see them? So, let's go through the uh, factors in a bit of uh, detail. Shape. So some things can be recognised instantly by their shape, particularly if it contrasts with the surroundings. So in this example, there's three easily distinguishing shapes which require disguise for concealment. The outline of the cadet, the round top of the helmet or berry the cadet is wearing, and the hard outline, sorry, the hard line of the helmet brim you know, the edge of the helmets, those all particularly stand out. So if you like, this is the wrong way because not camouflaged, but we can disguise the shape and that's what's happened in uh, the right hand picture. So there's going to be several examples of these where you see it the wrong way on the left and then the uh, correct way on the right. So another factor, silhouette, which someone's misspelt here. It's only two T's. Any object silhouetted against a contrasting background is conspicuous. Smooth flat backgrounds such as water or a field or worst of all the sky should be considered dangerous in terms of silhouettes. Any object may also be silhouetted if it's against the background of another colour. So for concealment, choose an uneven background, such as a hedge, a bush, trees or broken ground. So don't stand against the skyline. By crouching down here the cadet's no longer silhouetted. Next we're looking at texture, or as I said before, we used to call surface. So if an object has a surface that contrasts with its surroundings, it's conspicuous. So here, 
this uh, cadet who's camied up and he's got all this foliage stuck on him which if he was out in the field would be brilliant it would help him to to be hidden here that's a complete contrast against the brickwork other examples of problems would be you know shiny helmets so if you didn't have a uh, cover on there camouflage cover or if you were wearing your cap badge that was quite shiny on a on your berry jewelry number of times cadets go out and they've got jewelry showing you know your wristwatch or a necklace and obviously our skin particularly if we're white the skin contrasts violently with uh, most backgrounds and needs to be disguised if you want to uh, remain concealed so again like before the way not to do it on the left the better way of doing it on the right so that's texture or as I say used to be known as surface here's another example why is it that this marine is easy to see have a think about that in terms of texture for a moment well, let's start listing some of these his face the brim of the helmet as we mentioned before in shape and the very smooth texture of the combat uniform you know he hasn't done anything there to uh, break the uniform up or hide it so this is uh, a good example of where if he took some of the, the foliage that he's in and attached that to his uniform that way he wouldn't contrast in his tone with the surroundings next factor shadow when you're in sunlight an object must cast a shadow you know whether it's a person or a building and that gives away the presence so if you see in this picture here this marine standing against the wall he's actually casting a shadow against that wall which makes him easier to see so top tip for concealment try to keep in the shade if possible instead of casting a shadow use a shadow to hide in so if you are in the shade of this building that gives cover and it also stops your own shadow being uh, revealed but uh, something to remember if you're going to be in uh, a position for a, a long period of time remember the Sun is always moving so as it moves the shadows move so again this first picture on the left not the way to do it he's out in the open and he's cast in a shadow picture on the right much better he's actually in the shade of the building so not only is he not casting a shadow he's using the building shadow to hide himself and something that uh, we might do quite often if we were practicing fighting in built-up areas sort of urban fighting where we're using buildings we might take cover in a building but be looking out of a, a window as a firing position well that's all very well but you need to bear in mind that are you remaining within the shadow if you lean out too far as in this picture you can see um, the rifles actually cast in a shadow down on the wall as is some of his hand so you need to restrict how much you uh, reveal of yourself that you don't stick out too much and that you're not creating a shadow but you could stay back in the building a little bit near that window and you'd be in the shadow area and you'd still have a line of sight and a good firing position spacing so we we should all be used to patrolling and we're all sort of spaced out as we're patrolling such as in this picture but in nature objects are not usually regularly spaced so the moment items are regularly spaced by items I can mean people or other objects that suggests that they're man-made and the eye is naturally drawn to them so to be concealed you want to stay not regularly spaced as in the top picture but try to vary 
your spacing. That way you're less likely to be spotted. Movement, the last factor. The human eye is naturally attracted to movement, as are a lot of animal eyes as well, especially sudden movement. So for concealment, all your movements need to be slow and cautious. Let's imagine in this picture, I know it's difficult for a still image, but uh, this cadet is moving a bit quick. Obviously that's not only movement drawing attention to himself, but that's probably going to move the foliage around quite a bit. So if you do sudden movements, you're more likely to be revealed. In this right hand picture, the cadet's moving more slowly and obviously that disturbs the foliage less as well. So what else can we do to help with concealment? Well, we can use cam cream. Hopefully some of you have got that. You know, we cover the face with the cam cream. But don't forget, it's not just the front of the face we need to cover. We need to think about our neck, our ears. The number of times I see cadets cam up and they don't bother doing their ears. Or they don't do round on their neck, and the size of their neck. And also, their hands. If you're not wearing combat gloves, your hands are going to be exposed. And that's just like with your face, that uh, the texture of your hands will show. So either wear combat gloves or put some cam cream on the hands as well and any exposed skin. So what's the right level of cam cream on the face? This is too much. You know, it might look good on the American films, but this is too much cam cream. It's, it's, it's no good and uh, there's too much foliage being placed on, on the helmet and uh, maybe on some of the, uh, the combat uniform as well, and that can draw attention. No, nope, that's not good. So what about this one? This is just far too little. You've got the two extremes. The left is too much. This one is far too little. This is the kind of level of cam cream we're looking for. It's just a matter of uh, putting a bit on, just trying to break up sh some of the shine on the face and some of the shape of the face. And also with the amount of uh, like foliage, hessian, that uh, the cadets got on the helmet and the clothing. So camouflage and concealment, two really important skills that you've got to master. You've got to uh, consider all of those six factors. So those factors include shape, silhouette, shadow, think about those so you're not easily seen and think about uh, animals have evolved through uh, time to uh, use those skills so in this picture these uh, owls in the tree think about those six factors and this is a good one I looked at this and uh, I couldn't work out what they were trying to uh, hide in this one but apparently there is a stick insect on this uh, tree. If you look closely you might spot it. Oh, I haven't been able to. <laughs> and this uh, particular toad, look how that's hidden, that's camouflaged on the ground. It's very very difficult to see if you, unless you were observing really carefully, you probably wouldn't see that toad. So concealment, think of ways where we could hide ourselves. Have a look at this position. In this picture, there's actually a cadet hidden there. You see with the outline, where they've picked that tree and hidden themselves down there. They're, it's good in that they're, they're concealed, they're camouflaged, if you like, by blending in with that tree. It's not the best fire position, but it does show you that if you scan in, looking over that very quickly, might be quite difficult to see that cadet. So think about uh, 
using those factors with a bit of thought you can often hide yourself quite well. So let's summarise. If you know how things are seen through those six factors, the 5S is the 1M, you can hide yourself but also knowing those six factors should make it easier for you to find the enemy. Thanks very much.